Welcome to another episode of Demystifying Gay Porn. My name is I.K. Grande, and if you watch gay porn, I've definitely helped you get off. Today, I have content creator Alex Ticas yeah. with me. Content creator, porn... Porn star adjacent. Porn star adjacent. <laughs> Why the adjacent? I don't think I'm ever going to be... Uh, a por- I, what is a porn star? Yeah. What, <laughs> what exactly happens when you're a porn star? Yeah, I think that the the definition of that has gone uh, by way of it's. I think it's the like, '90s. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's like I just. I think there are like porn stars, and then there are other guys that are in the scene that are like. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about um, how you've been during the pandemic and during uh, COVID. Um. So when the pandemic hit. Um, when we started the beginning of it, uh, Julian was coming back from Europe because he was literally escaping the shutdown. Mm. Like, like as soon as he left the town, it was shut down. Oh God. And then all of a sudden I was like, uh, he's like, I think they're shut. I'm like, you need to get on a plane right fucking now. It was right before his birthday. And he literally came in on his birthday and it was like defeated because he, this was going to be his year. Mm. You know, he was in Europe. It was about to start these whole tours and whatever. So he came back and he got here uh, in mid March and my gym had shut down. And you know, like when the gym shuts down, it's like, yeah. that's like the, the gays are going crazy. Are going, <laughs> I was like, I think we, uh, I think we need to get out of New York and just go to DC because mm-hmm. he was living there. So we just left and went and sheltered in place in DC. Mm-hmm. And um, that's what we did. We just sort of like, that was three months into our relationship. And uh, we sheltered in place there, created a lot of content. <laughs> we got a fuck machine. <laughs> we got like, what did we get? Like, to- like we just started creating all of this stuff. Um, and... Um, I spent the pandemic getting to know my partner, my guy. Mm-hmm. So, um, and then I would say right around July or so, late July, the gyms opened up in DC, thank God. So masks and mm-hmm. I mean, what do you do? Like you adhere to what you're supposed to adhere to. Um, the client situation, because I'm an escort as well, the client situation just sort of like went away. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but unemployment for me came in, like, you know, things just sort of like, yeah, I was in a very fortunate position because in my prior life, had I continued with either mm. job, cause I had two jobs before I had this, I would have been literally had the pandemic hit while I was in that field, I would have been homeless living with my mother in her spare bedroom. So it just, it, I was in all sincerity, I was a lot more fortunate than a lot of mm-hmm. people. Ironically enough, because of my fan pages, the fan pages and the content and the fa- it's so silly, the content and the fan pages sustained mm. me. Um, and the content that I had stored and ready to be edited and the content we created sustained me during a pandemic while other people with jobs and other people... You know, not to sort of like say karma is a bitch, but the other people that are sort of like downplaying mm. or, oh, yeah. of course, they're like, you do that. You know, you're, a, yeah. you know what I mean? And I'm just sort of like, hmm. So, so we got through it. And then July rolled around, things started getting DC and the uh, adjoining states, Maryland and Virginia, they weren't as, uh, severe the 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 rules as they are in new york new york was just like shut down and deal with it Mm -hmm. we were fortunate we could still at at the very least in july we could start dc is beautiful in the you know and we could start at least going back to the gym i mean it sounds so fucking privileged but for but at least we could do that you know and sort of like and then there was a lot of TV, a lot of binge watching, yeah. a lot. I, like, you know, I introduced him to Sex in the City. So we just sat down and watched all 10 fucking seasons. Of- how, how do you feel about Carrie Bradshaw as a, as a model for a woman? I mean, I loved it. We loved it. In the late, like, that was sort of like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that was the show. But um, um, Carrie Bradshaw as a woman, like, I wouldn't, like, she's annoying. Yeah. Um, she, you know, because I, I like, watched, I had a lot of 90s nostalgia about two years ago. <laughs> And I just, I really just watched almost every show that was made in the 90s or 2000s that I didn't really uh, 
I don't know, I didn't really get. Yeah. Or I watched maybe one or two episodes and I was like, oh, it's a good show. Yeah. And I wanted to know what the appeal was of this woman. And I love Sarah Jessica yeah. Parker, but Gary Bradshaw, I don't know, man. <laughs> She's just, like, there's a lot of words that I can use <laughs> On how she treats guys, and I'm, maybe I'm just looking at it from a guy's perspective. It's, but you just, it's, I think if you're a woman, like it's totally, you get it. Yeah, like when you like, I don't know. Maybe you'll interview like a woman. Yeah, you know, and then you should ask her that. Uh, yeah, okay, I will. You're right. <laughs> so you guys, you spent a lot of time watching TV. You spent a lot of time getting to know each Get, other, getting and, to know each other. Cool. Um, really, just sort of like relying on each other. I came back to New York for a month, and the dog was in DC. Took care of the dog. Like mm. really, mm. just finding a a teammate i would say and like somebody that didn't i didn't want to kill and yeah. somebody that that's I, always good then somebody like i'm like I'm, it's like four months and i'm still having great sex with this guy yeah uh, like ex exclusively like whoa that's awesome <laughs> it's like yeah yeah so i was like it's like me hmm, what's going on when everything opened up or things got a little more lax in yeah. new york mm -hmm. um what was it like being a content creator during that time Listen, I, it, you contact people that you want to shoot with. Mm -hmm. And, um, I'm pretty sure that I had gotten, I'd never lost my sense of smell. I lost my sense of smell in, or in late March, um, a bit of malaise as well. Uh, Julian had malaise as well. And I've been tested for it three times and it came back negative, a couple of them right before a shoot mm -hmm. for a film mm -hmm. and they came back negative. Um, and if somebody wants to shoot with me and we're consenting adults, like, yeah, mm -hmm. let's, let's shoot. Bills need to get paid. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and, uh, there, there, I've reached a point in my life you know, reach a point in my life. reach a point in my life where like moving forward with zero fucks is incredibly important. It's incredibly liberating it's, too. <laughs> you know, this job is that people ask me like, how can you do this? Mm. Whatever this is, and freedom. You know, when you're when I've been flipping burgers, I started flipping burgers at fourteen. Mm -hmm. I'm forty. I'll be forty eight in August. I was flipping burgers at fourteen, and I've worked ever since I was 14. And this is the only period in my life where I have freedom. And, you know, there, it's a job. Mm -hmm. It is a job, yeah. you know, and sometimes it's fun. So a, a lot of times it's fun. Um, but it's mostly about freedom. And it's, you know, just the ability to, to sort of like write out your day when a lot of people can't. Mm -hmm. Like, it's ridiculous, the privilege, if you think about it, and if you have a little bit of common sense about it, it's ridiculous what, what good things come. You're fucking people for a living. Yeah. You're fucking people and you're making money at yeah. it. And then when you're not, what are you doing? That's sort of like what, that's the important thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm, you know, I'm engaged with, uh, engaged with my partner just sort of like in a day-to-day -day thing mm -hmm. i get to play with my dog my family lives around the area i go to the gym and if i want to stay for fucking three hours at the gym i stay there yeah. i try like you know what do you the, the rest is up to you mm -hmm. you know so who can say you get to have fun at your job yeah and then you're afforded the freedom to do whatever you want it's a it's it's luck. I think it's luck. With that, uh, where are we right now? Where are we where? Where are we in? Uh... Oh, <laughs> welcome, everyone. Um, so when talking about the pandemic, my roommate, who was a bartender, uh -huh. who we were both bartenders at one point, he was a bartender. He could no longer afford to live here. He decided to move out. I was this close to moving to D.C., mm -hmm. but Julian said, well, I'm coming to New York. And I'm like, well, if he comes to New York and we... This used to be my bedroom because mm -hmm. it's okay. the biggest room in the house. Yeah. And I, and then we were looking at each other and we were like, this is a fuck room. Yeah. <laughs> there's a sling. Yeah. There's a massage table. There's a rim chair right behind you. Oh, I saw. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, there's a like, and it's a place to shoot content. Yeah. And it's a play. It, it's a place for us to shoot content and for potential, mm -hmm. you know, whatever that potential is right now, we're not 
too sure of. This mirror, this is a very, very common sex mirror, and it's from Ikea. Yeah, this one is probably from Ikea. Yeah, I, yeah. I've seen it in various <laughs> sex rooms. It's out of control. And it, every time I look at it, I'm like, oh, okay, that, that mirror's yeah, from yeah. Ikea. No, I we have it, like three of them in the house. So it serves like its purpose. Small, medium, and large. The larger ones <laughs> in the bedroom. But yeah, this one's... Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and we turned it... And it was Julian's sort of like, we're not done by any means yet. But mm-hmm. it was... Um, you know, there are a couple of... There, like What inspired me was um, I had... Filming content, Mm -hmm. the biggest challenge is editing, and the biggest challenge, I would say the biggest challenge is editing and space. Yeah, isn't it? You know what I mean? So so you're like 40 (laughs) minutes of fucking footage, and I'm like sitting there, like me, like I can barely turn on the fucking computer. And I'm like, I'm fascinated by content creators. And all of these models, I'm, I'm always interested to see who falls off and who doesn't because it's not, everybody thinks, and we were having this conversation yeah. on the way here, but everybody thinks, oh, you know, I'm going to put my dick or my ass on, on no. OnlyFans and stuff. Hey, you have I, to put that shit together. Dude, like I get people calling me like, there, I want to do porn. I'm like, no, no, you don't. <laughs> not, not right no, now. you don't. And I'll tell you, like, so, um, you know. Camera is important. Editing is important. And at that point in time, New York Seed, who I adore... And it's like such a funny story because the guy who runs New York Seed was when I was a talent agent in my former life. He was a client, and really, I'm like, <laughs> "Are you so and so?" And he goes, "Yeah." Do you, do you remember so and so? Who he's like, "Yeah, he was my agent." I'm like, naked with a hard on. I'm like, uh, "I was your agent." <laughs> Get out of here! That's crazy. <laughs> and we and so I love him dearly, and and we've shot there, and I shot there because I shot there because um, I didn't have to edit, mm-hmm. I didn't have to hold the camera, I just had fun. Yeah. And then the and the next day I had like a thirty minute scene. Oh, okay. So they take care of uh, all of it at that in point. exchange in exchange for usage rights. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. which at the time is not such a big deal. You know what I mean? It's sort of like, it's a fair exchange Mm -hmm. as far as I'm, for some people it's not. For me, it's a fair exchange. Um, And now, just sort of like elevating, you know, it's sort of like, that was sort of like the first season. (laughs) You know, the first season. And now in the second season, we sort of like, we're not not using it for other, we're using it for us with other people Mm -hmm. in it. And, you know, um, ideally having a cameraman would be great to come in and just like pay him by the hour. Oh, I have someone that you might be able to use. Thank you. We'll talk later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll talk later. So, um, so that's what we've turned it into. And it's been, f- I mean, nonstop, mm-hmm. fun, mm-hmm. fun, fun, fun. And that's what it should be. Yeah, exactly. Once it becomes too much craziness and too much work and too much studio like, no. which is what a lot of people are in danger of becoming. And it's just the nature of the game. I think it's like, just... so my, my favorite studio is like, it's fraternity X. Oh my God. I love fraternity X. Are you fraternity kidding me? X and sketchy. And sketchy. <laughs> they're like my yeah. favorite studio because literally they're just yeah, it's Bros a little, it's a little too cat. much chaos, though. It's a little too much chaos. For it's me. like oh, you're fucking. You're just like, like can you imagine? But can. can you imagine being the one editing that scene though? Nightmare. There's there's like four different cameras. Um, but they're like my favorite. The only thing I don't like about them, and I'm gonna totally call them out. They, I know a fake cum shot when I see one, and they fucking fake their cum shots more often Dude, see, than see i'm like a, i'm like an idiot i'm like oh my god they're like they just keep coming and coming and no. then somebody somebody <laughs> like told me there was no fucking santa claus all of a sudden when they told me like they're fake no they're not there, there are a couple of of real ones in it but yeah. i've watched i can see the tube there's so, a tube underneath and you see oh, it coming what's his out name? um Oh, the skinny guy with the, the skinny guy with the tattoos. That's like every one of them. But Ari, him, Ari Nietzsche, <laughs> Ari Nietzsche, who was in a couple of them, and he was in a very popular one. And like he came like five times, right? And I was just like, ah, okay, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not so much. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, I, I think that when you're watching all of that, yeah. and they're all hot. I don't understand like how they get. They must be by a college or something, and these guys need money. But um. You th- I, I know a couple of models that have done scenes there, sure. but so other I. than that, I don't know all the other people that are in, in, in the scenes. But just getting those guys together. It's like, they don't look professional in any way, shape yeah. or form, which is like, yeah, hot. yeah, I mean, it is. It's, you know, fucking on camera should be like, there just happens mm-hmm. to be a camera in the room. That's sort of my thing. I like that too. You know what I mean? But I also like close-ups. 
you like close certain ups. close ups. I mean, You're I like... just I'm watching porn since I was like ten. Okay. You know, and eventually, yeah, yeah. Straight porn or gay porn? Straight. Okay. Like my my Greek, I was like ten, and my friend is like, come to my house, and I just like watched the A Team. It was the A Team. I'll never forget it. And it was like a, it was a game. It was like an orgy. It was mm-hmm. like you know, people were. Fu- I was like, what the fuck am I watching? And I'm like, I have to go to the bathroom right now. And I, w- I keep going back and forth, and I'm like, what the fuck? Like. <laughs> It was the craziest. I don't know if I should have been exposed to that. It's like such a thing, but it was hot. Yeah, like, like, you're hot. How old were you? I was Ted. I was okay. like, a, a, I want to say nine or right around that time. And I was like, what the fuck? That was hot. Yeah. It was great. <laughs> uh, you have a Greek friend. You you are Greek. I am Greek. Yeah, Greek yeah, yeah. American. And you grew First up. First generation. <laughs> you grew up where? I grew up in Jamaica, Queens on really? the South Side. Queens. There okay. you go. Yeah. <laughs> there, was, actually... there was the side where Donald Trump grew up on the north side oh, okay yeah <laughs> which is jamaica states and then there was hillside <laughs> avenue and then you were in the south side oh, boy. <laughs> you guys own donald trump you know that right well, <laughs> queens we own, we owns own Nicki donald you gotta take him <laughs> we own Nicki Minaj. we own ll cool j we own queen latifah <laughs> we own donald trump i'm actually very familiar with this area so oh, I, have, cool. I have a greek friend that lives not too far from it here is, yeah and that it seems like every time i come into queens it's always the same exit i have to take Exit 31. Oh, yes. I so, so I Boulevard, or, or you end up in the Bronx. I either go straight or I make a... Today was the first time I made a left. I uh, always make a right or straight. So I was like, okay, this is a different area of Queens. Yeah, but I've been to Icon. Is that... Um, yes, it's the gay I've bar. Been to we, do, we do like RuPaul's Drag Night. <laughs> uh, when, when Before pre-pandemic, yeah, so we yeah. would all go and watch RuPaul like every week there. Yeah, awesome. yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's very Jersey-esque, which I'm, I'm from. So it, it reminds me... Yeah, it it's reminds me of... Feathers? Of feathers, yeah. Poor Feathers. I don't know if they're going to make it through this yeah, pandemic. But. So you you grew up uh, in a Greek family. Grew up in a Greek family of just, you know, single parent, mm-hmm. mom. You know, there were three of us and we're all just sort of like these titans and she's sort of like five foot two and she's like guys us around. all guys no my no? my brother and my sister but okay. we we're all just sort of like big people and mm-hmm. she's like this tiny woman and and uh, I left the house um, and at about 21 or so because I started acting. Okay. Which um, yeah, let's let's. Do you yeah. want to get into that? No, Is that sure, cool? sure. Okay, sure, so sure. you're before you got into before I did porn. this, I was a musical theater performer, and then um, I left the business because I got an opportunity to work at a really big talent agency okay. for a, a theatrical agent, and after that, um, I left and started working for a manager, a talent manager. Mm-hmm. Which is sort of like, I mean, you're like into 90s, so it was like basically Joey's manager from Friends. Okay. So, you know, what was her, Sylvia? What was her name? Like Estelle. Estelle. Estelle? Thank you. He does everything. So his, <laughs> it was Estelle. So I basically worked for Estelle for a couple of years and then opened up my own department for somebody and then opened up my own business, started, had my own. I worked, I represented uh, Broadway performers. Um, Broadway television. I discovered Azealia Banks oh, before okay. Azealia Banks yeah. became Azealia Banks. Like I found her at LaGuardia. I had her for like a couple of months and then she's like, I want to, I want to rap. I'm like, okay, girl. <laughs> then Go do like, it. Yeah. And then like, I'm just sort of like doing my thing. And then like two, one, two comes out. And I'm like, mm. so I did that for a while. Um, so fast forward to about um, 20 and I did that for almost 20 years. So fast forward to about 2018 and I was doing that. And I was bartending. And then um, my boss at the bar, uh, who shall remain nameless because there are a couple of bosses there that I adore, mm. um, decides to fire me to hire his husband's side piece. Oh, geez. And I didn't find that out. I was I was being terminated because I just wasn't the right fit for the bar. I was too, I was too outspoken okay. for happy yeah. hour. <laughs> that sucks. Yeah, I, that's such but, a horrible. But then I find out that the side piece was hired, who was in, in, was you know ultimately terminated um, from the bar mm. for whatever reason. And then, but in that month when I was terminated, I was at the talent agency, commission based business only, and like all of a sudden, five thousand dollars of my savings just disappeared in a month, mm. just living, you know. And I was like, oh no. So like, what the fuck am I going to do? Because I'm never bartending again. I'm never going through that mm-hmm. fucking bullshit mm-hmm. again. And I, I used to hustle in my late 20s, you know. And I was like, well, I guess like daddies are in. You know, let me see what I could. I went on I went on Rentman. I 
I use my credit card. Huge market for daddies. Yeah. Daddy dish. Yeah. Rough dad. Dad rough trade. Dad rough trade. Okay. <laughs> um, so I started and it just like a pebble, like it just started avalanching. Mm-hmm. And I was doing very well and it was fantastic. Um, and then I couldn't get hard, but you know, because sometimes you just can't. Mm-hmm. And then I discovered Trimix and I'm like, there we go. We're done. Yeah. <laughs> the perfect. pharmaceutical industry thank is you. such a big part of the thank porn you. industry. Yeah, oh my God. <laughs> like, thank you, Jesus. Um, and um, so that sort of like turned into OnlyFans and content. Um, and I was involved in a relationship with somebody who was sort of like in charge of it. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, well, I want to kind of do porn as well like why not i have an only fans but so i got into a bit of a scuffle with my ex at the time about that i'm like so i can be a hooker and i can do only fans but uh i can't do porn and that just sort of like that relationship yeah. <laughs> that relationship ended. and then i had to learn so how to do my how to do my own content mm-hmm. and it wasn't about like two minute scenes which is what he wanted to do it's they're paying five dollars yeah, for your you page. Give them- <laughs> no, 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 no. They're paying five dollars for your page, and I'm like, just it's twenty cents a day. No, no, they are paying five dollars, and if they are paying five dollars for their page, and you know some of these guys are charging like fifteen and just yeah, so, yeah. muzzle tough. But like, f- they're paying five dollars for. They want to see. They want to see that. Sh- you yeah, know? you got to give them at so, least ten minutes. Or you got to give them at least, and I give them like fifteen or yeah, twenty. Cool. Part one, yeah. part two. You know. Yeah. Um. So. It just turned into like a great means of income. Mm-hmm. And the goal ultimately is to just sort of like have like 2,000 fans and eventually stop escorting, which is sort of like, I would say it's like a huge chunk of mm-hmm. what I generate right now. Um, and um, and they sort of like, the more you do, like I did a shot for Treasure Island. Mm-hmm. And then I shot for Raging Stallion, which was like crazy. It was like my first. That was like the big. Yeah, what was that experience? Oh my god, like? amazing! Steve Cruz was amazing. Yeah, that yeah. was his last. I mean, but it's very different from shooting from like Treasure Island. No, from they, they flew from... me out there, yeah. and they they I, it was Alexander Kristoff and Teddy Torres, and I'm like, what? Yeah. That was like World Series for me because yeah. those like that is. I'm such a fucking cliche. Like, that's just like it. You know, those are the guys. So it was perfect. They were lovely. Everybody was lovely and professional. And like, well, yeah, but regarding like shoot times and stuff, like, no, it's, we really banged it out. It, we banged get it out. out of here, we banged really? it out in four hours. Okay, all right. I that's was interesting. Like, yeah, we got everything we needed to get in four hours. It's been nominated, I think, a couple of times. Like, it's you know, just like thank you. I barely talk to it. But I couldn't believe it. It's just it, nice to be nominated. Just, it's just, no, <laughs> trust me, because I know how this works. Um, but such a funny business. Yeah. Such a funny business. But uh, it uh, it was just like a – it was great. The whole experience was great. Um, and then I saw who was there for that particular shoot. And mm-hmm. I'm like, it's am- it was – I don't – I'm so bad with names. <laughs> but I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, like, yeah. Loved it. I had a wonderful cool, time. Cool, and then cool. Treasure Island. But, you know, my sort of like the main. So I went to, we went to, I went to Fort Lauderdale with Julian and um, we uh, banged it out for all of those studios down there. That was fun. And then Treasure Island has been sort of like the, the New York mm-hmm. sort of go to mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. They're great. Yeah, no, I love yeah. the the reason why I say it's different is because we're so used to California studios being eight hour days, 10 hour days yeah. that our shoots are like two hours two and a half hours tops and we get our shit done and we i go. shot with a treasure island with uh, nate stetson mm-hmm. we were out in an hour yeah isn't that crazy uh, and it's all based on the performer yeah like you guys we make had, it happen yeah that's we what, had a good we had a good, had a good time. we're just there following it around you know like no, that was fun. that's always fun whenever that's you guys always. have like scenes where it's so that's why it's important like i think you gotta ask mm-hmm. you got i mean you gotta tell them um who who you would like to shoot with yeah who what kind of guys you're into Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. sometimes i get casting as casting i mean i'm from that world so i like i'm a big guy so when you're getting like a a really tiny twink it looks amazing on camera i shot with somebody a couple couple of guys recently that are literally like half my size Mm -hmm. that looks great on film 
Um, not necessarily the guy that I want to shoot with, yeah. but they they were hot. And it was fun. Yeah. You know, well, but... I mean, if, if it works, it works. Yeah. I think a lot of times, especially when I do some casting, mm -hmm. um, I don't know, man, I like asking what you're into because, yeah. and if you haven't met this person, but you're really into them, you're going to yeah. look forward to meeting them. It just makes everything a lot yeah. easier. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I mean, but I, I'm, I'm assuming you've gone into a shoot like with a twink or something and that might not be your style, but you were like, fuck it, we'll make it work. Uh, I've had to mm. do that. Uh, but it ha it it didn't yeah. sort of like get to the a particular le level yeah. where I didn't want to actually be there, mm -hmm. you know. I was just like, mm -hmm. ugh, let's get there. no. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, I'd like to tell people try mix in a BFA. <laughs> <laughs> the rest yeah. you can figure out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What kind of stuff are you guys getting into? I saw a fisting video just recently. You know, it's funny. Um, you got fisted. So I. I love him so much. And I'm going to tell him one of the reasons why I love him so much is because it's like the only way in my history, in my life history that I was able to get fisted was when I was like cracked out of my brain, like high, mm -hmm. like, and then your inhibitions just sort mm -hmm. of like go out mm -hmm. the window and then you get hurt, of course. So yay. But Julian was like, oh no, <laughs> you just grab that bottle of poppers right there and I'll take care of the rest. And all of a sudden this guy's hand is in my hole and fast forward <laughs> to like i'm sort of like like i want you to fist me like right i'm asking for wow it. okay yeah. so we're doing a lot of that i mean the the uh, we've done we've shot uh we've shot our couple of scenes together we shoot a lot of content at, in three ways together mm -hmm. um the fetishy stuff the fisting stuff is kind of intimate for me. Mm -hmm. He's the only one that does it to me. We've had, I've had his, I like to call his, his trainer, his, his, the guy that taught him mm -hmm. things, fist me when we were down in Fort Lauderdale. And he's awesome, but like, I was just so uncomfortable mm. because I guess I'm just sort of like used to, yeah, a used to the way, way he tosses yeah. my salad. <laughs> <laughs> So nobody, and you know, I'll bottom and gr like a, a lot, like I love to bottom, but um, he's the only one that sort of, it's a little, uh, I don't know. He's like, a, I'm, a, he kind of breaks the barrier yeah. a little bit. He, like I can trust him. I trust him. Yeah. That, I think when I it comes to fisting him. and I'm only speaking yeah. from somebody that's yeah. seen it yeah. uh, close, yeah. but uh, it's a lot of trust. I can't tell you. You're like, inside of somebody. Like, I mean, <laughs> and the only other situ the other way I I know it is when I'm like not here, when I'm not present, mm -hmm. and when I'm not present, it's not safe mm -hmm. for me. So, yeah. trust plays a major factor. So, there. that's, yeah. that's kind of where it is. Filming now. Yeah. With uh, you said you do three ways. You invite sure. other people yeah, in yeah, and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um. How much work is that? How much work is finding people? How much work is it's actually you, talking to other people and saying, "Hey, getting it done." I you know, you you go on Twitter, you you see uh, you see who you like if they happen to be in New York and you just I you just reach out. Mm -hmm. I know what I bring to the table. You know, I know what Julian brings to the table. Um and we know what we can do for somebody who is particularly starting out. Okay. Um but even if you're starting out, if you're not into us, you're not into us. And there have been a couple of guys that were just like, why isn't he talking to us? Like, and he's not talking to us because he's not into it, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. which is great, which is fine. Um, but not as, not as difficult. It's not difficult. You, you just ask if mm -hmm. you don't ask. I mean, I'm sure you come across flakes. You come across people that just say, oh, I want to do it. And then come time to shoot. They're no we longer. Have a, we have a, there are a couple of guys that are uh, we're no longer going to be contacting that person, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. that's a, for the most part, people kind of, they need the content too. Um, so we've been, we've been lucky. I would say, what would you say the content community is like, like the people that uh, are like you guys and are, is it friendly? Yes. Okay. Friendly. Like you come into my house. Yeah. So if you're an asshole, you're going to go, <laughs> you know, um, when I've shot at New York seed, um, or when I've shot with, there are about 12 guys, I would say, you know, Atlas has been great. Like yeah. Atlas really helped. Macho Grant is another one of the Grant family. Uh, Mac and Roth was sort of like the first 
my first experience and mm-hmm. he's just sort of like the he's like the icm the talent agency of like okay. poor people <laughs> because he's just sort of like so business about it and like so professional and um so, you do have to be though that's one thing that people on. were having an issue with was well uh, tg57 paperwork so taxes <laughs> taxes are important pay your fuck pay your taxes <laughs> pay your taxes yeah. like and it, and but the fan pages they send you the w2s pay your taxes mm-hmm. you've been watching demystifying gay porn i'm your host ike grande demystifying gay porn is available on every podcast directory as well as youtube demystifying gay porn is on x instagram facebook telegram and if you like what you're watching or listening to and want to be a part of the creative process head over to patreon.com backslash demystifying gay porn where you can help support this audiovisual podcast and YouTube channel, and I can continue making content like you've just enjoyed. Once again, this is Demystifying Gay Porn. My name is Ike Grande, and if you watch gay porn, I've definitely helped you get off. Cheers. Cheers.